exploring crypto at least using a finite object. Let me start by explaining why we need it. So we all know the basics of virtualization. We take physical hosts and we deploy our workloads, our applications, uh, in virtual machines that run on top. And by now we are pretty well aware of the benefits of virtualization. Just to name a few, the additional isolation level that we get from virtual machines uh, provides us with a better security. We can emulate I uh, operating systems that are different than the base operating system that is installed on the host. It makes our applications easier to back up and move across physical hosts, and so on. When we think about those benefits, we see that they stem from the additional abstraction level virtual machines provide on top of the base, base operating system. So this abstraction is generally good, but it comes with a cost. And I would like to focus on a specific one. How can we inject files <coughs> from the physical host to the virtual machine and vice versa? How can we extract files from the virtual machine to the physical host? Let's consider two different cases. One, we have a running virtual machine. And let's say that we want to copy a file from within the guest to the physical host. So I try to think about the possible solutions uh, that, that are available today. Some of them are internet based. I can upload the file from the virtual machine using my email. If the file is small enough for larger files, I can use some file sharing services. For larger files, I can use file sharing service such as Dropbox, Google and so on. The problem with this kind of solutions is that they are based on uploading uh, uh, via the internet and therefore they are relatively slow. Alternative, alternatively, I can use SCP or set an NFS share on the physical host and mount it into the virtual machine. That way, all the trans uh, transmissions are uh, over the LAN and therefore it is uh, uh, faster but on the other end, it is more complex for the end user. And lastly, I can use guest agent based solution. Some vendors allow to share a file from the physical host uh, with the virtual machine. Some others run some service within the virtual machine that exposes its file to the outside world. The problem with this kind of solution is that they are not general enough. They are vendor specific. And now the second case. Let's say that I have just the virtual disk, the file. So what will be our options this time? If the disk is non bootable then we can start a virtual machine and attach the disk to that virtual machine. Then we can access its contents all within the, the disk. If the disk is bootable, we can do the same, or we can simply boot the disk for the, for the VM from the disk. In both cases, we need to make additional steps and then we fall back to the previous problem of the running VM. So these solutions, both of these solutions are slower and more complicated than the one uh, I mentioned before. And specifically the case of booting the VM from the disk, um, note that no other process can write to the, to the disk at the same time because the VM opens the disk with write permission. The alternative uh, uh, solution <coughs> I would like to, to talk about is about combining, integrating two projects, new commander and libsdfs, to produce a file manager that we can browse and modify uh, virtual disks with. Let's talk a bit about those uh, tools. So libsdfs is a set of tools for accessing and modifying the virtual uh, machine disk images. Supports almost every format of virtual disk, disk that I, uh, is available today. BMDK, QCAR, and so on. It can access remote disk images. It operates in a secure way. It can uh, access proprietary systems like Hyper-V and uh, <coughs> VMware, which is important for V2V process, for migrating VMs from an environment of one vendor to an, another environment of, uh, of a different vendor. All those capabilities and more are available via command line tools, such as uh, guest fish and build rescue. There is no integrated 
user interface in Leap District Test. Which brings us to new commander. That's what users say about new commander. A disclaimer, I've been involved in new commander for more than 10 years now. Uh, some of them as a contributor, uh, and yes, I'm a vendor for them. So I definitely agree with the fact. But seriously, in some more detail, new commander is a file manager uh, with a dual pane interface, such as that of total commander, local commander, midnight commander, and so on. But what makes new commander really special is the fact that it is cross-platform. It is rooted in Java and therefore can run on every operating system that supports Java. That's how the new commander looks like. We see that you are playing and a dialogue for uh, connecting to an SFTP server. We will see more of that in the demonstration. New commander is really a switch effect application. So I have a virtual machine uh, that is installed with Fedora. I log into that VM and I'll browse to my home folder. Inside my home folder, I have a folder called FOSDEM that includes a text file uh, with the following uh, content, FOSDEM 2019. Now let's say that I want to copy this file from the guest to the host machine, to my laptop. So using new commander, I can go to the disk image. By default, the disk images uh, reside in a var lib lib virt images when using virt manager. Um, it takes a bit time to query the data. I will speak about it uh, a bit later, but eventually it, uh, we get it. We can enter the etc folder. Let me uh, enter my home folder and specifically the, the FOSDEM folder inside and we see the text file. Let me create a folder inside my uh, TMP folder on the laptop, let's call it demo. And I can, with a single click, copy the file from the disk to my machine. Now let's open the local file and you see the same content. Now I will close my commander and I'll shut down the VM. You may wonder how come that the new commander managed to access the file while the VM booted from this disk. So the answer to that is here. You see this part? This part, uh, we, new commander provides libgestfs parameters that specify that the disk should be uh, opened in read-only mode. So let's, t let's change it. And I'll start new commander again. This time, we will be able to write to the disk. So I'll open it again. Note that in this demo, I use a, a disk of QCOW2 format, but every, every format that is supported by libvirt, uh, sorry, by libgestfs uh, uh, should work the same. So uh, I have the content, and let's go to the, uh, to the local file that we download that before and let's uh, add some text to it. Okay. Now I'll go to my home folder. 
I'll create another folder called FOSDEM2, and I'll copy the, the modified file to the disk. Now, I'll show you that this file actually this file is actually accessible from within the guest with the modified content. Okay, so. I'll go to my home folder, and we see the new folder for them too, that includes a text file. I'll open it. And we see also the add some text I just, yeah. Um, okay, so that's what I wanted to demonstrate. And now that we, sh that we saw that uh, this can actually work and what we can get from this integration, I would like to speak about the more interesting stuff that are related to the design and implementation of this feature. Specifically, I want to talk about three things. It was not as trivial as it may sound to model virtual disks in Mu Commander. And there are two projects involved with different API, <coughs> and there, are, there were some conflicts between them that had to be, to be bridged. And lastly, this integration uh, is different than all the extensions that are currently supported in Mu Commander, which makes it a bit more difficult to, to ship it to users, and we'll see why. So let's start with the uh, modeling part. In Mu Commander, we have three types of files. Archive files, those are files, those are files in the, uh, uh, inside uh, file systems that contain files and folders inside. There are protocol files, those are remote file systems that you need to connect to, generally authenticate and connect to. And local files, those are all the other files that reside on my uh, local machine. Obviously, the, uh, the best fit for <coughs> virtual disks is archive files, right? But in practice, the fact that virtual disks are relatively uh, large files uh, means that we want to query them in a lazy way. And in Mu Commander, archive files, uh, so in Mu Commander, only protocol files are queried in a lazy way. So eventually, I did map virtual disks as uh, two archive files, but the query thingy was uh, one of the gaps that had to be bridged. So let's start with it. With it. Besides the need to query large files in a lazy way, uh, um, or oh, actually, I say it differently. Mu Commander <coughs> used to query the entire content of archive files when uh, uh, when querying uh, files. But with virtual disks, not only that they, they are large and we cannot do that, also the API of LibGestFS doesn't support uh, such querying. LibGestFS supports. A, a querying only particular folders within the, the virtual disk. And therefore, that was one of the things that we, I needed to uh, uh, overcome. The way I overcome this, it is kind of a hack, but it was good for uh, this demonstration, this POC, was by introducing code that works over the entire structure of the disk. I used the visitor pattern specifically, but um, yeah, but ideally, we need to, to come up with a better solution for that, um, which probably means to change Mu Commander to query all files, not only protocol files, but also archive files in a lazy way. The second um, gap I want to, to present, to talk about, is related to the way Mu Commander reads and writes files. Mu Commander abstracts all the files using streams, and that allows Mu Commander to do some cool stuff. Let's say that I want to copy a file from an SFTP server to an S SMB folder. Mu Commander can hold two streams to both source and destination, read the packet from the source, and immediately transmit it to the destination. That way, files are copied without being persisted anywhere in the middle. Um, unfortunately, the API of LibGestFS doesn't support streams, uh, specifically their uh, API for Java. They only support local files and standard input-output. So again, I implemented some hack, and I used temporary files 
Um, temporary files. Let me uh, explain it by example. Let's say that I want to copy a file to the virtual machine, then I read a packet from the uh, source stream, from the, str from the stream that is connected to the source, save it, write it to a local temporary file, and then ask lib libgastfs to copy from the temporary file to the destination within the virtual disk. This is not that efficient, right? This is another uh, step, but it is not that bad because the the temporary files are local files. Ideally, we should change mu uh, sorry, the binding of libgastfs to support streams. Uh, that will solve uh, that problem. And now about shipment. Um, usually, in mu commander, we take the Java clients that are provided by other projects and integrate them into mu commander. In libgastfs, um, there is no Java client. There is a Java binding that includes also the, the Java uh, uh, products that we need at, com at compilation time. This raises two, uh, two difficulties. One, we obviously don't want to duplicate the Java file to mu commander because it should already be accessible on the host. And second, libgastfs Java might be missing on the host. I plan to overcome this problem by introducing this functionality as a plugin that will be installed separately on the host, and it will declare libgastfs Java, and specifically the version that we uh, test the plugin with, as a dependency. That's, that's the plan. And now let's talk about some uh, open questions. So we saw in the demonstration that it takes some time to list the content of the disk. That's because it is shown from the guest level view, as if the user SSH the guest and list the content of the disk. This requires libgastfs to inspect the operating system within the disk, which is a relatively slow operation. Not only that, it also <coughs> requires the disk to be installed with an operating system, and in case the virtual machine is set with multiple disks, to have all the disks together in order to ensure that we can produce this view. Alternatively, we can uh, uh, provide file system view, list all the file systems, and list the content of each of them separately. This will not su that way we will not suffer from the drawbacks I mentioned before, but it is harder for the end users because it is users don't necessarily always know on which file system the file they are looking for resides. They know it, uh, where it resides only from the case, uh, guest point of view. So my current plan is to combine those two views, to provide the, both of them to the user, and uh, let the user decide which one he wants to, to use. Secondly, uh, there's a question of whether to interact with libvirt. Li not only that libvirt can provide us all the virtual disks that the VM is set with, which is needed for the guest level view, but it can also um, tell us what is the status of the VM, whether it is running or not. And by that, we can figure out uh, if we can open the, the disk for uh, writing, or we have to open it in read-only mode. But that introduces additional uh, complexity, so we'll need uh, to consider that. And lastly, uh, about caching. Mu commander use, is used to cache the content of the queried uh, files and to update the, their content only when the modification date of the file is changed. But in practice, I see that with virtual disks, the modification, the, the, the modification date of the file is changed regardless of actual changes in the content of the disk. So we will need to come up with a different solution um, for caching. Now, the functionality, <laughs> the functionality I present here is part of a broader view. Um, and I want to talk in few words about the vision. I want to, to reach a state where Mu Commander is a truly pluggable file manager. Let's say that we will turn Mu Commander into a core part and all the extensions will be implemented as plugin. So some of them will, be, will provide the existing functionality, some will provide the support for virtual disks, and there are many more candidates such as Dropbox, Google Drive, even Ovirt, uh, listing the storage domains is inside Ovirt, and many others. The fact that Mu Commander is written in Java 
allows us to leverage Java, uh, uh, Java clients that are typically uh, uh, provided, uh, is, are provided by different projects. And the fact that Mu Commander is cross-platform makes it really attractive to other projects because they can uh, uh, reach broader audience, right? Now, a word about the roadmap. This functionality uh, is planned to be shipped in the next version of Mu Commander 0.9.4. Past experience shows that I can, that I'm able to release a new version of Mu Commander once a year. Uh, the last version, uh, I released three updates, so, because I expect the next one to be complex and it will take time. But hopefully, uh, I'll be able to uh, ship it later this year. To sum up, in this session, uh, I present an integration between two projects that produce a file manager that we can browse and modify virtual disk squid. It comes in the form of a plugin for Mu Commander that uses libgestfs behind the scenes. In a way, this integration can provide the user interface that is missing for libgestfs. This, as you might have noticed, is really in its early uh, uh, phase, this, the, this development. So I published a POC in November, uh, discussed it on the libgestfs mailing list. Um, and really, if you have ideas or you want to contribute either code, documentation, um, in whatever way you, uh, you want, I really encourage you to do that. Uh, all feedback is welcome. Uh, you can uh, join our uh, uh, group at Gitter, and that's our uh, GitHub page of Mu Commander and both website of the, the two tools that are involved. Um, that's all from my side, and now I'll be happy to take questions. Yes. Yeah. Seth? Yeah. Uh, I'll repeat the question. Uh, the question was uh, whether we consider uh, integration with Seth. Um, yeah, why not? I mean, when we, once we have a good plugin uh, architecture, uh, there's no reason not to support uh, Ceph and other uh, f uh, formats and uh, protocols, yes. Hopefully, I mean, it, it would be best if it will be contributed by the, the community. Yes. <laughs> that would be <laughs> ideal. <laughs> yes? Um, so for LVM-based virtual machines that might have their PV spread across multiple disk files, is that <coughs> something that's working via the guest view? Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, um, so the question was about when we use LVM that are set above on top of uh, physical uh, volumes that reside on different uh, disks, on different files. So yeah, that, that, that's why we need all the disks uh, to be provided and then libgestfs do the job for us and, you know, create that, combine that and produce the guest level view. Um, and that's some of the motivation to use libvirt uh, to, to be able to to provide all the, the input that is needed. More questions? Yes? There's also the way of using Plan 9 FS in the Word Manager. Sorry, I didn't follow. You can also use Plan 9 FS in the Word Manager. 9 FS? You can exchange files between hosts and the guest of the virtual machine. 9 PFS. 9 PFS. Yeah. Nine. I don't know what's, what is that. Uh, <laughs> Ah, okay, but but. Yes, so uh, I didn't get the name. Just if you can re re repeat the name of nine PFS. Nine PFS. Uh, so the question is uh, whether uh, about nine PFS that uh, provides a, an alternative way to uh, share a file between the host and the virtual machine. So uh, I don't know that particular one, but I guess I mean I, it. it you say it is provided by virt manager. What if we use, uh, you know, a different, like not virt manager but ovirt, for example? And so this is I I, I I I consider this solution part of the uh, vendor-specific stuff, right? Yeah. I want to. It's the it's your based, and so it's almost coming with a KVM uh, out of the box. Okay. And it's, it's pretty fast, actually. Okay, so. If, if, if you had the support in over, so let's say, okay, it will be provided for KVM, but then what about other uh, hypervisors? I mean, uh, 
Okay, so uh, time is up. So thank you all for uh, attending.